here's the big T. Here's why you came, I think, to this video. Hey everyone, I know I have a lot of new faces here, so before we jump into all the scoop, which is why y'all are here, I just wanna reintroduce myself and say hi. My name is Marnie, I am 49 and a half years old, and I just recently came back from my ninth LTK conference. Before it started, I asked my Instagram audience if they had any questions about LTK con, and then I thought, let's kill two birds with one stone. I am going to recreate the makeup look that I wore every day of the conference that lasted me 12, 15 hours with zero touch-ups except lipstick. So if you're interested in all that, I'm gonna be doing that, not talking about the products though, so do check the description box to get all that info. And at the same time, we're gonna do a little story time Q&A and I'm gonna spill all the tea, give you all the background details, and if I miss anything, be sure to leave me those questions in the comments. I do read every single one and I try to answer every question that is asked. One of the things I wanted to share with you is this new to me makeup bag by the brand Cushy, Cushy, Cushy? We're gonna call it Cushy. And I actually got this as part of a swag bag at one of the events I attended. We'll get to that later. And I reached out to the brand and they actually offered me a 10% off coupon code. So if you order it on their website, I'll link it below, um, you can use the discount code. If you'd rather just order it from Amazon at full price, it's also on Amazon, which is kind of awesome. And I love this makeup bag. I think this is the medium size. It has two zippers so that you can easily get into your stuff without it falling out. There's a big interior zip pocket. There's a big two like sleeve mesh pocket. It came with this insert that snaps in so it doesn't flap around and you could put brushes and stuff in here. The best part, I think, you can throw the whole thing in the washing machine because I know my makeup bags get filthy. The first question I got was, what the heck is LTK anyway? What does it stand for? It is a third party affiliate marketing company and basically what that means is they connect, I think it's like 6,000 retailers and brands with influencers, or as I like to think of myself, a creator. And that gives us the opportunity to create affiliate links, which are commission-based links, with all of these brands and retailers, which I personally think is pretty cool because then I'm just sharing what I genuinely like because basically everywhere I shop is linkable, which was formerly known as reward style, just to make things confusing. Then on top of that, they started an Instagram app called Like to Know It a few years back. And that was the first and possibly only, unless you go directly through Instagram, way to shop directly from Instagram. They pioneered that and it was known as Like to Know It, which was under the reward style umbrella. And then over time, they just shortened it to LTK and then they decided to just rebrand the whole company, drop reward style and call it LTK. They also started, they also started connecting brands and creators to give creators opportunities for sponsored content. Okay, so let's get to your questions. Very popular one was, can anyone go? Who gets invited? Why don't I see XYZ kind of people there? Why are all the people one thing or the other? Who gets invited? It is an invitation only conference. You have to be invited to attend. You cannot just buy a ticket and show up. The invitations traditionally were based on just performance. I mean, this is a company that is dealing with selling things. And so it was who are the top two to 300 earners in the LTK family. That doesn't mean that all of them were there. I mean, there were quite a few people that are traditionally there that didn't come because they all had an out-of-town wedding or, you know, they've been there, a few of them, they get it, they're at the top of their game, they don't need to come. But generally speaking, when you look at who was at the LTK conference over the years and even this year, the majority of them are the higher earners, the best performing. It's just metrics. The other rumor that I have heard, so I can't verify this, is that... They also this year extended that invitation to people with potential for growth. They were looking at their numbers and whatever platform they're on, they seem to be performing really well on compared to their size. So they invited those people as well, which I, I like that. I think that was really cool. There was everyone and every kind of person you could imagine represented at this thing from your traditional, stereotypical, skinny, young, blonde girl with the perfectly done waves, uh, to the older ladies. I used to be one of the older ones in attendance. I met a lady who was 63 who, oh my God, I'm not gonna like reveal people's ages if they haven't told me to, but 
absolutely stunning and a huge has a huge following of her own. Every kind of clothing size, every kind of skin tone. There were a few men there. I think maybe like two male influencers. All the demographics were represented. It's really just a matter of who sold the most stuff. So next question I got was, is it free? And uh, no, <laughs> no it is not. And I believe the ticket was $300. It's usually $300. So that's just the ticket to attend. They do offer us a group rate at the hotel where it is held. This year it was held at the Adolphus for the first time. So it's still expensive, but slightly less expensive. I want to say the room rate was two or $300. It's usually in that range per night, which is another reason why you see a lot of girls rooming together. It's one to hang out with your friends, but also it's honestly to save money. I mean, that gets pretty expensive. You are responsible for paying how to get there, whether you're driving, flying, whatever, that's on you. Once you get there, they provide you with a breakfast and a lunch every day. There is a lot of free alcohol at the evening events, which I always found hilarious. Some past hors d'oeuvres and then dinner, if you want like actual food for dinner that will fill you up, you're on your own, make your own plans. You do get quite a bit of swag. That was another question I got a lot. Um, when you check into the conference, you, we got a huge, I think you pronounce it Anine, Anine, I, I used to call it Annie, I'm sorry, I don't know, Annie, Anine Bing tote bag, gorgeous, filled with goodies. I actually shared that on my Instagram stories and I do have an LTKCon highlight there, so I'll connect that down below. And then there are different venues within the venue. So throughout the actual conference, we attend, like the whole group attends a big meeting. There are break off classroom sessions. There is a, a couple ballrooms that we meet at for lunch each day, actually just one. There is also something called the brand hall where brands slash retailers have paid to have a booth set up much like any other convention you would attend. And they are staffed by people from those companies. Tarts booth was manned at some point by Maureen, the CEO, the founder of Tarte. That was insane. I was like, oh, 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 okay. You just don't expect that to see that for a huge brand. But they have like their marketing and social media relations type people staffing it. They do hand out a ton of free stuff. Their hope is sort of like dating. Their hope is that you will take that free stuff and share it with your, you know, your audience and hopefully enjoy it. And then maybe you'll like the brand. And then at the same time, they're hope we're hoping that they like us if we, you know, genuinely want to work with the brand and then maybe we'll get a brand deal with them. I will say that some of the brands had extra special swag bags that they held back for maybe influencers that they already knew and had relationships with, so it had extra goodies. There is another aspect, as I was saying, and this one really feels like speed dating. There is the one-on-one -on -one brand meetings and it's another ballroom type room set up with tables round tables for all the brands in attendance. And it is man, each table is manned by some one or two people from the brand, a representative from LTK, and then anywhere from one to three influencers will sit for, I think it was like 15, 20 minutes. And we kind of try to date each other. It's the craziest thing. I do not like it. It's always awkward and weird. And sometimes when you meet with a brand there, they will give you an extra swag bag. So for instance, from Tarte was handing out amazing stuff at their booth. And then I met actually with them and one other influencer sat at the table. And at the end they said, oh wait, don't go anywhere. We have more goodies for you. And it was another huge bag of more Tarte stuff. So I covered a lot of the things, but the juicier stuff. So the other big one was, did you see any diva, real housewives behavior? And here's the big T. Here's why you came, I think, to this video. Here's the disappointing answer. Nope didn't see it. Let me explain what I have figured out over the years. People who are content creators, be it bloggers, Instagrammers, YouTubers, what, TikTokers, whatever our medium is these days, we work alone. I mean, most of us do not have a team of people. Most of us don't even have an assistant with us in our house. We work by ourselves and for ourselves. We do not interact with other people. We talk to people who are not actually in the room with us. So because of the nature of our work, because of what it is, the kind of people who are generally, I should say, drawn to that are introverts. They aren't really interested in actually talking to people. They like the virtual people. 
they do really well behind a screen and on a keyboard. That's not all of us. I enjoy meeting new people. That's like my favorite part of the conference is wandering around meeting random people. When you factor that in and you see people who appear standoffish, I have learned that for the most part, I think I can count on one hand the amount of people that actually might be kind of snotty and diva-ish. But for the most part, I like the 300 people that are there, if they're not friendly, it's because they're shy and they're introverted and maybe they're a little overwhelmed themselves. So yeah, sorry, no diva behavior that I observed. As far as the clicky thing goes, are there groups of women who stick to each other and are in that same group throughout the conference? Of course there are. Like anywhere else, if you go to a big event, like say you go to your high school football game, your kid's high school football game, or you attend the PTA event, are you going to look for people you know and sit with them? Or are you gonna just walk up to random strangers and be like, hey, let's all sit together? No, we're social creatures and we're drawn to people that we already know and have connections with. And for this conference, you have to remember that most of us are scattered all over the country, if not the world. There were international attendees there. Most of us, even though we communicate daily via text or some other messaging, messaging service, we don't actually get to see each other and spend time with each other unless we come to this conference. So it's a, it's a giant influencer reunion. And of course we're gonna stick to the people that we've developed relationships over the years. I can speak that for my group, we're always adding to that every year. And so the group gets bigger and bigger too, as we meet new people and new people start attending. So there's, the, I think that's kind of what you're seeing there. I feel like people who see it as clicky want to see negative, so they're gonna see negative. Let's talk about the fashion. So, you know, there are all kinds of verticals represented. Not everyone there is a fashion influencer. I kind of fall in that category, but if you've followed me for a little bit, you're, you know, I just share everyday wearable clothes, but there are all kinds of people from, you know, petite to plus size, from everyday fashion to editorial couture type stuff. And admittedly, all of us have some interest in fashion or we wouldn't be there. And so this is the opportunity to, let's just say, let your freak flag fly. If you wanna wear something that's uh, a little more outrageous than you would generally wear at home, this is where you wear it. So yeah, I saw some stuff you wouldn't see normally, you know, going to the movies or at the mall. You know, someone was walking around at one point in an entire outfit made out of feathers, which was really cool. But where else are you gonna wear stuff like that? But generally what I saw and what I tried to wear as well is the stuff I would wear all the time, the stuff that I share with you all the time, the stuff that got me to this conference in the first place. So for me, <laughs> that was Walmart, a lot of Walmart. And uh, it was pretty funny because I was getting tons of compliments, not on my $250 Farm Rio dress. I mean, I did get compliments on that but more compliments on the Walmart scoop dress I wore for the opening day. So I just thought that was kind of funny. There's definitely a stereotypical look <laughs> and it's a stereotype for a reason because you saw a lot of it. Like I mentioned earlier, the long blonde hair, the beachy waves, the slightly short skirt that kind of is it's not tight. It's kind of flippy, some kind of boots. I mean, it was it's definitely a stereotype. The stereotype has evolved. In years past, it used to be referred to as when the rock studs come to Dallas because everybody was wearing Valentino rock stud shoes. That trend seems to have passed, although I did see some. A lot of luxury handbags. I will admit, I brought mine out too. Why not? This is the time to let them shine. Now, back to that hair. So I am not someone who is easily intimidated but I have been dealing with thinning slash just losing my hair over the last few years. I've done a couple videos on how I'm dealing with that. I'll link the latest one up there. So I'm more self-conscious about my hair and I feel like in these situations, whatever you're self-conscious about, you're gonna project that out and that's what you're gonna see. So I see this mass of beautiful, perfect, thick, full, long hair. And aside from a handful of people, which includes Lisa Lisa D1, her hair is all hers. Many, 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 many of the women that I interacted with are wearing hair extensions or and or like hair pieces, like a halo type stuff. And I'm not judging. I actually have some and I was gonna bring one, but I've changed my color and it didn't match up. For any of you watching and going, why doesn't my hair look like that? For the most part, um, None of their hair looks like that. It's all, it's not all, but a lot of it is paid for. <laughs> then another one I got, we're just wrapping this up here, is was everyone invited to, could everyone attend, I guess, all the events? So yes and no. So LTK 
Con, if you bought the ticket, everyone was invited to all the things that LTK Con did. All the speakers, all the brand meetings, all the classes. You're assigned your brand meetings. You can't just randomly start sitting down at that round table with any brand you want. Like I had four meetings. And in all the years I've done this, I've never ended up doing a sponsored video or content with any of the brands I've met with in the round tables, but I have done just randomly talking to people in the brand hall, which is how the my I designed a handbag for Gigi New York, and we just released a new color this week. That came from meeting them and just talking to them randomly for a few years in a row. It's the stuff that we are not all invited to is if you have a relationship on your own with a brand that is either at the conference or in Dallas, then you, know, you may get invited to that and not everyone else will. So like Tarte had a private dinner for some of their, I guess, top influencers or people that they work with, and I wasn't invited to that. I was invited to the Avara brunch on the Monday of the conference with I think 10 other influencers. I was also invited to the BK Beauty happy hour that Tuesday night. That was separate and at a actually not, not even at the hotel. It was at the Catbird at the Thompson Hotel. So there's some of that. Oh, and I was invited to Colleen Rothschild's birthday dinner. It was just me, Lisa, Lisa D1, and Makeup by Tiffany D was supposed to be there, but her dog passed away. And so obviously she chose not to attend the conference. Who are you excited to meet? And I'm probably going to leave out names because there are so many, but I was really looking forward to meeting Tiffany from Makeup by Tiffany D. She's like the OG of YouTube and she was supposed to be there um, and obviously had to cancel at the last minute. I was really looking forward to meeting Dr. Dre and I did get to spend a good amount of time with her and she did not disappoint. In fact, something interesting is that everyone in person, they're just more, you know, because they're, they're three dimensional at that point. They're usually prettier, taller, more sparkly, bubbly, and super friendly, and really easy to talk to. So I would say that applied for sure to Andrea, Dr. Dre. She was a delight to hang out with. Okay, may have gone a little crazy with the highlighter, but I've been distracted. Super excited to meet Stefana Silber. She's a home influencer who are style and a DIYer. So you know, there's people from fashion and beauty and home and family and fitness and. Like every cat, it was really neat to meet all those people. I really was excited to meet Mommy's Makeup and Moscato, Kelly and Christina. Um, they are also over 40 YouTubers here on, I was gonna say here on YouTube. And that was really fun and we really connected and we've stayed in touch. I follow Wanda Loves Sharing on Instagram and just like happened to run into her in the brand hall and we've connected and turns out she lives in Houston. So I spend a lot of time in Houston. So we're talking about getting together the next time I'm there. And then for me, it's about reuniting with people I haven't seen in a long time. There are so many and I don't want to leave anyone out, but there are a couple that I want to mention because they have huge followings and I know people kind of want to know like, ooh, what are they really like in real life? So someone I met fairly early on in the conference and at the time she was just getting started and now she's got like an empire was Brittany from Loverly Gray. And we connected because she has a wine runner and I have a wine runner. That is our connection. And when I met her, she was, you know, just starting out and, you know, a little under the radar. And every year that I see her, she is the kindest, most genuine person, asks about the kids, asks about the dog. Like she is a genuinely nice person. As she's grown and grown and grown, I have seen zero changes. And I was sitting at one point in the conference kind of observing her and she was interacting with a bunch of other random people and just lovely. So Loverly Gray is a very um, applicable title for her. I do wanna give another shout out. Like I said, everyone I encountered was super nice, but someone who I wanna give a special shout out to is Nasreen from Hey Nasreen. She is on Instagram. And again, the first time I met her, was through Lisa J Makeup because they're friends from Austin and she was a brand new Instagrammer and really sweet and just just really, really sweet and kind and approachable. Well, now her stuff is blown up. She actually won the LTK award for rising star in fashion. She's had a heck of a year. She, so the conference was in September, September of 2021. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. A year later to the month, she's standing on a stage in front of like 500 people accepting an award. And she is still as gracious and sweet. And again, remembers the details about your family and what you're up to. And so I'm gonna list there, like everyone that I've 
kind of mentioned. I will list that below. I also did a whole vlog last week that gives you a little bit more of a behind the scenes look and I listed a bunch of influencers. That'll be up in the eye and I'll put that down in the description box. Well folks, we're just topping off with the lipstick I wore most days. I had a whole bag of lipstick and I would just keep slapping different things on. Plus as I got samples or like free product, I would start playing with that. So I definitely have some makeup to talk about in future videos. This doesn't exactly match, but I was gonna wear this one of the days and I ended up not, not wearing it. So I'm giving it life here. That is everything except the thing that I think made my makeup stay 12, 15 longer hours. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray and this Tarte Smooth Operator Finishing Powder that I got the first day of the conference. Those two paired together, I think made this whole look stay put. That wraps up the look and the tea. If I didn't answer any of your questions or you have more for me, please just let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.